guys, my name is Ashley and welcome back to Science by Ashley. Most of you might know that I'm originally from San Diego, California. However, right now I'm living in Australia. Australia has been so great, however I'm so bummed because I'm missing out on the bioluminescent waves that are occurring in San Diego right now. For those of you that don't know, Southern California's coastline has been lighting up with these bright blue bioluminescent plankton. While this bioluminescence might seem like a super rare occurrence, it's actually seen in a ton of different forms of life. About a year and a half ago, I got to see glowworms in New Zealand. You might have seen or have heard of fireflies. And over 90% of animals living in the deep sea also use bioluminescence. It's a way of life for them. That's why this week I'm going to be teaching about bioluminescence. So let's get into it. So the textbook definition of bioluminescence is the production and emission of light by a living organism. This light occurs from chemical reactions that are happening inside or that are ejected by the organism. Bioluminescence is found in animals from bacteria all the way up to sharks. It is also seen on land, however most of it is occurring in the sea so that's what we're mostly going to be talking about today. All organisms that produce bioluminescence contain the molecule luciferin. When this luciferin reacts with oxygen, a chemical reaction occurs that produces light. Organisms have two different ways of making this chemical reaction occur. Some organisms have luciferase, which is an enzyme that speeds up the reaction between luciferin and oxygen. Organisms that don't have this luciferase use what are known as photoproteins, which are essentially is luciferin and oxygen bundled together to be used or expelled whenever they want. All it needs is a certain ion to come in contact with it, typically calcium. There are many different advantages for being able to produce bioluminescence, one of which is being able to lure in your prey or light up your meal. This is seen in deep sea fish such as lanternfish or anglerfish. Lanternfish are relatively small fish that make up a large portion of the deep sea. They use photophores covering a lot of parts of their body in order to attract in their next meal. You guys might have heard of the anglerfish from the movie Finding Nemo. This is the terrifying fish with the huge teeth that has the appendage sticking out from its head with a light at the end. This light attracts prey to come in only to be the anglerfish's next meal. An interesting point to make is the visible light spectrum from the sun doesn't reach the deep sea. Specifically, the color red, which has a longer wavelength, rarely is ever seen in the deep sea. And that's why a lot of fish living in the deep sea have evolved to not even see the color red. So certain fish that are able to produce red light have a huge advantage because they can see prey or predators before the predators and prey can see them. Another use of bioluminescence is to attract mates. One of the most popular examples of this is a particular species of fireworm. Psyllid fireworms are typically found on the ocean floor. However, during mating periods, which typically occur around a full moon, these fireworms start to go up towards the surface of the sea, and female fireworms put on a bit of a bioluminescent show in order to attract the males. In my opinion, one of the coolest ways that bioluminescence is used is for protection. Organisms have evolved so many different ways to protect themselves from predators, from escaping them to hiding from them entirely. Some organisms use counterillumination. This is when they use photophores in their body to essentially match the ocean above them, so they completely blend in. Some bioluminescent species of octopus and brittle stars are known to completely detach their arms in order to escape predators. Sea cucumbers are super cool because they can break off a piece of their bioluminescent body, attach it to another fish, so their predator will chase after that fish while the sea cucumber makes its escape. Even the glowworms I saw in New Zealand light up in order to tell predators, I'm toxic, don't eat me. Those are just a few of the ways that bioluminescence is a huge advantage in a range of organisms. Bioluminescence has been huge in scientific research. Years back, scientists had this thought that they might be able to find the giant squid because it's attracted to bioluminescence. And lo and behold, in 2012, we were finally able to capture the giant squid on camera due to following bioluminescence. Researchers on the west coast of North America have identified a gene in bioluminescent crystal jellies known as GFP, or green fluorescent protein. Scientists are able to attach this GFP protein onto other studied genes so that it can monitor its activity, see its expression, and watch how it's interacting with other genes. 
and the moment you've all been waiting for, what does this have to do with the bioluminescent waves seen in San Diego? When all the conditions line up, blooms of phytoplankton occur on the surface of the ocean. These phytoplankton are in the family of dinoflagellates. Remember the zooxanthellae that we talked about with coral bleaching? That's a dinoflagellate as well. However, that dinoflagellate is symbiotic and doesn't produce bioluminescence. The dinoflagellates seen in San Diego are known as Lingolodinium polyhedra. During the daytime, these phytoplankton appear as red tides because they have a certain sunscreen on them that produces a red-brown color. However, at night, when these phytoplankton are disturbed by a swimmer, a boat, or a surfer, that's when they emit bioluminescence. And unfortunately, scientists really don't know much about these red tides and bioluminescence. There's really no way to predict when they're gonna happen or how long they're gonna last for. So might as well just enjoy it while it's there. And that's pretty much how bioluminescence works. If you're in San Diego right now, please enjoy it for me because I wish I was there. A huge thank you to Miro from New Zealand who wanted to learn about bioluminescence and to Jake from Santa Barbara, California who was interested in learning about lanternfish. Please continue to send in topics that you want to learn about either through my Instagram, Science by Ashley, or in the comments down below. I really hope you guys enjoyed learning about bioluminescence today. Please like and subscribe or comment down below to keep up to date with all my latest videos. See you guys next time.